Hey guys, Chris Ignato here. You are watching Nature Now. So you know what? It's been a while since my last species profile video and that's been driving me mad. So this video here is about a certain type of ground beetle called a snail hunter. And it's a member of the Carabidae family. Like all carob beetles, this beetle is actually quite pretty to look at, but it's also a little bit ferocious. Hope you enjoy this one. There are numerous types of snail hunters out there, and this one is often referred to as the narrow-headed snail hunter for obvious reasons. Reaching sizes of over an inch long, these impressive beetles may appear black at first, but under the beam of a flashlight, or the rare occurrence you actually see one in the sunlight, you'll notice a brilliant purple sheen on their entire body. That purple is margined along their backs and on their somewhat bowl-shaped thorax by a stunning electric blue. And depending on the angle, it can be very vibrant. Their elytra have many ridges. I think those ridges are there to help provide structural reinforcement for the elytra because those elytra have to cover their relatively wide abdomens. I imagine if they were unridged like some of the other large beetles I found, their elytra would dent and get damaged fairly easily. The legs on these beetles are fairly slender given their size, and that leads me to think that it allows them to cover considerable distance in no time. They seem to be built for speed and climbing. Often, these beetles are found upon tree trunks at night searching for their evening meals. These gorgeous beetles remind me of other carabids known as caterpillar hunters and the fiery searchers, such as the one in this video here that I filmed a year or two ago. Like their name suggests, the diet of snail hunters consists of, well, snails. And in this case here, they like slugs too. I haven't found any information on them feeding on anything else. Maybe they like fruit? I don't know. But obviously, their main choice of food is snails. In fact, they likely just stick to the food I mentioned because they have several specific adaptations for such a diet. The most obvious being that narrow, elongated head, complete with long, saber-like jaws, perfectly suited for reaching into the snail's defensive shell and getting to the meat of the issue. When chow time is over, you find nothing but an empty snail shell. The next adaptations you might notice are the four specialized mouth parts that look like two pairs of antenna. Obviously, they aren't antenna because you can see those long thread-like antenna sticking out to the sides. Those mouth parts are segmented and terminate in large fan-like brushes, if you will. They use them a lot like mine detectors, sweeping their heads from side to side, searching for the snail's trail. They even tell the beetle what direction their food is traveling. Again, sweeping these organs from side to side, they track down their prey in no time. Once captured, there is little escape. They can grasp the snail shell with their mandibles and at the same time ingest digestive enzymes right into the shell. You remember the movie The Fly? How he would kind of regurgitate onto his food and pre-digest it before consuming? Yeah, there you go. Basically, as I said, that's beginning the digestive process before they even begin to consume their meal. That's partially why this slug here looks like a big, sticky rope of goo. And of course, being that snail hunters have not been raised with some of the table manners that you or I might have, they haven't figured out how to use knives and forks yet. All joking set aside though, these are fairly clean insects. Being nocturnal in nature, you'll rarely see these beetles during the day as they'll be hiding under bark, leaf litter, or even moss. I can't help mentioning that these are great insects to keep in your garden because not only do they reduce the mollusk population, but they also lack hind wings. That means they're less likely to fly off to find brighter horizons. Snail hunters are found in forests and woodlands with lots of moss, leaf litter, and logs throughout the northeastern United States. But there are many related species found throughout the United States and other parts of the world. Anytime I'm fortunate enough to find a member of the Carabidae family, I'm a happy camper. Quite literally, in fact, because those are usually the only times I actually find one of these insects. 
I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you're lucky enough to actually see any members of the Caribidae family because they're really impressive. They're large, they're brilliantly colored, and they're just really cool to watch. Thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.